स्टूडेंट्स लास्ट टाइम इन द सेशन ऑफ फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द ऑप्टिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स वी डिस्कस्ड ह्यूमन आई एंड सिंपल माइक्रोस्कोप टुडे आई विल एक्सप्लेन अबाउट कंपाउंड माइक्रोस्कोप एंड एस्ट्रोनॉमिकल टेलीस्कोप दीज डिवाइसेज हेल्प ह्यूमन आई टू ऑब्जर्व हाईली मैग्नीफाइड इमेजेस ऑफ टाइनी ऑब्जेक्ट्स फॉर देयर डिटेल्ड एग्जामिनेशन एंड ऑल्सो टू ऑब्जर्व फार ऑफ टेरेस्ट्रियल ऑब्जेक्ट्स टू गेट इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट स्पेस अराउंड अस इन दीज इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स द एसेंशियल कॉम्पोनेंट्स आर आइदर लेंसेज और मिरर्स एंड द इमेजेस आर फॉर्म्ड बाय रिफ्रैक्शन थ्रू लेंसेज एंड रिफ्लैक्शन एट मिरर्स फर्स्ट वी विल सी कंपाउंड माइक्रोस्कोप विच इज़ यूज टू ऑब्जर्व हाईली मैग्नीफाइड इमेजेस ऑफ टाइनी ऑब्जेक्ट्स इन दिस देर आर टू कन्वर्जिंग लेंसेज माउंटेड एट द फ्री एंडस ऑफ टू को एक्सीएल ट्यूब्स सो दैट वन ट्यूब कुड मूव ओवर द अदर द लेंस टूवर्ड्स द साइड ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट इज कॉल्ड ऑब्जेक्टिव विच हैज़ वेरी स्मॉल फोकल लेंथ एंड शॉर्ट एपर्चर the other lens is called eyepiece which has moderate focal length and slightly larger aperture you can see in the diagram the object ab is placed beyond fo the focal length of the objective and its real inverted and magnified image a dash b dash is formed in front of the eyepiece which serves as the object for the eyepiece the final image a double dash b double dash is formed at the distance of distinct vision from the eye placed very close to the eyepiece and the image is further magnified in fact the eyepiece behaves same as the simple microscope the magnifying power of the compound microscope is the ratio of the angles subtended by the final image and the object on the eye when both are at the least distance of distinct vision that is m is equal to beta by alpha where alpha is the angle subtended by object while beta is the angle subtended by final image so that alpha is equal to ab by d and beta is equal to a double dash b double dash divided by d and hence magnification m is equal to a double dash b double dash divided by ab which can also be expressed as m is equal to a double dash b double dash divided by a dash b dash into a dash b dash by ab or m is equal to me into mo now me is equal to a double dash b double dash by a dash b dash which is equal to 1 plus d by fe as the relation obtained in the simple microscope and mo is equal to a dash b dash by ab which is also equal to vo divided by minus uo hence magnification is m is equal to vo by minus uo into 1 plus d by fe as the focal lengths of eyepiece and objective are small therefore uo is nearly equal to fo and d is nearly equal to l the length of the microscope then magnification of compound microscope is m is equal to vo by minus fo into 1 plus l by fe the focal lengths of objective and eyepiece that is fo and fe respectively being small the magnification of the compound microscope is high as m is negative the image is always inverted that is upside down and left turned right when the final image is formed at infinity which is called the normal setting then magnification of compound microscope is given as m is equal to vo into l divided by fo into fe 
to improve the efficiency of device some measures are taken like aperture of lenses being small the spherical aberration that is distortion of images minimized and to minimize the other defects like chromatic aberration combination of lenses are used for both objective and the eye piece the other important optical instrument is the astronomical telescope which is used to observe heavenly bodies like stars planets etc in astronomical telescope there are two lenses or a lens system one is objective having large focal length and large aperture and the other is eye piece which has a small focal length and small aperture both are mounted on the free ends of the two coaxial tubes that can slide one over the other in normal setting of telescope the final image is formed at infinity as shown in the diagram the parallel beam of light coming from infinity falls on the objective lens and real inverted and diminished image a dash b dash is formed at the focus of the objective the eye piece is adjusted such that the focus of eye piece also coincides with the position of the image a dash b dash which now serves as the object for the eye piece and the highly magnified final image is formed at infinity let us see the magnifying power of astronomical telescope in normal adjustment which is the ratio of the angle subtended by the final image and the angle subtended by the object directly on the eye when the final image and the object both lie at infinity as the object is at infinity hence the angle subtended by it at c2 is nearly same as that subtended by it at c1 since c1 and c2 are very close as alpha is equal to angle a dash c1 b dash and beta is equal to angle a dash c2 b dash therefore tan alpha nearly equal to alpha is equal to a dash b dash by b dash c1 and tan beta nearly equal to beta is equal to a dash b dash by b dash c2 so that m is equal to beta by alpha is equal to b dash c1 by b dash c2 or magnification m is equal to fo by minus fe negative sign here indicates that final image is inverted for large magnification the focal length of objective should be large and that of eye piece should be small magnification is large also when beta is much larger than alpha in normal adjustment of uh, astronomical telescope distance between objective and eye piece is equal to fo plus fe now in situation when the final image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision from the eye then magnification of the astronomical telescope is equal to the ratio of angle subtended at the eye by the final image at the least distance of distinct vision and the object at infinity when seen directly therefore magnification m is equal to beta by alpha becomes m is equal to b dash c1 by b dash c2 is equal to fo by minus ue the lens formula 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f for i piece becomes 1 by minus d minus 1 by minus ue is equal to 1 by fe rearranging the terms it comes out as 1 by ue is equal to 1 by fe plus 1 by d or equal to 1 by fe into 1 plus fe by d and therefore m is equal to minus fo by fe 
into 1 plus Fe by D. Negative sign indicates that the final image is inverted. Magnification is minimum when final image is at infinity. For large magnification, Fo should be large and Fe should be small. There is one more type of telescope that is reflecting telescope. Reflecting type telescope was first designed by Newton and then modified and improved from time to time. One reflecting type telescope is called Cassegra telescope in which there is a concave parabolic mirror of large aperture. This concave mirror is called reflector which is of about 200 inches with a narrow hole at its center. The parallel rays coming from distant stars tend to converge at focus F of the mirror after reflection but they fall on a convex mirror P placed before F which reflects them in the direction of the hole. These reflected rays are collected at I passing through the hole and image is formed at I which is seen through the eyepiece placed there. In normal adjustment, the magnifying power of a reflecting telescope is M is equal to FO by FE which is also equal to R by 2 divided by FE where R is the radius of curvature of the concave reflector. In Newton's reflecting telescope, parallel beam coming from distant star is reflected by large parabolic concave reflector P and then again reflected by a plane mirror M which is placed inclined at an angle of 45 degree with the axis of the reflector. Finally, the reflected rays converge at point I where image of a star is seen distinctly by the eye. The reflecting telescope is preferred than the other telescopes as it has some advantages over the others. In this telescope, there is no chromatic aberration since the objective is a mirror instead of a lens. Spherical aberration is also reduced in this type Image is more bright, resolution is also higher as the mirror aperture is large. Mirror requires grinding and polishing on one side only. Arrangement is more convenient as mirror can be supported from its entire back surface while a lens can be supported over its rim only. Due to these advantages, very large reflecting type telescopes are set up by different countries for astronomical observations. Okay, with this we complete the topics of ray optics. Next time wave optics will be discussed. See you then.